So here's my hand, here's my arm, this line in the middle here, that's gonna be the vein for my body. All right, so let's say you put your tourniquet on up here if you need one at all. Now you see your vein, you're like, beautiful. But now it's valve tested because these valves will ruin an IV if you run into one. So you're gonna push here, you're gonna do your valve test. Uh-oh, we got a valve. Gonna go a little further up, no, now the one. Oh, crap, another valve, okay. This whole vein is clearly riddled with valves. We have valves here, 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 here. You know everywhere there's a valve. Okay, we do a little one. Okay, finally, we know that this little bit here, this little inch of this vein is valve free. So at least we have somewhere we can initially stick the IV in, right? But we do know that if we put the whole thing in, we're gonna run into this and this vein's gonna go bang, right? It's gonna blow up. So we're not gonna do that, but we at least know where we can first stick in there. Okay, so we've prepped our site. We we got the tourniquet still if we need it. We're ready to we're ready to insert our IV. All right, so we're gonna go in here. We're gonna go boop, and now we just have the tip in. We're gonna get rid of our tourniquet because we have blood flow. Now, typically you would be inserting your catheter, right? If this were a normal vein, but since we have a valve that we know about up here, we can't do that because it's gonna run into it and it's going to make it this explode. So, we have our blood return. We only have the tip of our catheter in the vein right now. So the tip and the bevel is in. We have good backflow. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna pull the needle out. We're gonna hold it right here. Not gonna insert it at all. It's gonna look weird. Let's say this is my catheter. The tip of it's in, but for now, we're gonna leave it out, okay? Now, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna connect our flush. We're gonna first pull back on our flush and we're gonna see that we have blood return coming back into our flush. Because you might think, oh, well, I have backflow in my needle chamber, but that might not be enough. You need to make sure you're in the vein. So the best way to do that, just pull back, make sure you actually have good blood return. If you do, you're probably in it. Now, taking our flush up here, right? We still haven't advanced this at all. So we're gonna push a little bit of saline in here. And just as if this wing were already inserted normally, right? We're gonna test it. Very nice and slow. Just make sure we're not having any bubbles popping up in here. You're just pushing in a little bit just to test it, and you've already gotten your good blood return. Now, these two things go well. You know you're in the vein. That's what you want. If uh, you don't get good blood return, it's risky, but you can test it just nice and slow so you don't get a whole lot of fluid up in here if you don't have to. Okay, so let's say everything's going well. You push here. It's flowing in there. It, the guy says it's done hurt or anything. Okay, cool. We know we're in the vein. Now we just need to get this whole catheter in. So, by pushing saline while we thread this through what's going to happen is we have a valve right and it's closed by pushing saline in this direction this valve is going to open up right the pressure is going to open that valve so so long as we're still pushing saline this valve is going to stay open like that right with the force of that saline going pushing through it and that's what we want to do we want to open this long enough so we can get our catheter through it and then when we stop it's gonna close around our catheter, but that's not a problem because we're already through it and it's not gonna blow it up by closing in on this. All we know now is we've gotten through without puncturing through this valve and busting this vein. So, you know, we're gonna keep it open long enough to get this thing through it and then it can shut on it all at once. We're already through and now we have a usable IV. So, while we're pushing on our saline flush and we have our tip in here, we're gonna do both at the same time. We're gonna push this and thread it through as we're pushing on the saline. Exact same time, so we're gonna go push and thread. And what I like to do at all times when I'm threading an IV, and this is a lot easier by the way with two people, if you have one person to just hold the IV and the other person just to control the flush, it makes it a heck of a lot easier. One person can really hold that skin tight over here as they're holding this. And let's say that this is the hub of the catheter. You're gonna wanna kinda pinch it between your thumb and index finger and just rotate it like that. Kinda spin it, twirl it, wiggle it through that vein. Because when you think about it, it's a lot easier to control movement. Like this is, this is hard because you have a lot of friction and you can't control it so well. When you wiggle it, you have a lot more control over the speed also, when you wiggle, it seems to just go through like the twists and turns of a vein and get just through any kind of obstacle that you might have. So by twisting it and wiggling it through like that, 
just seems to work best. So that one person can go wiggle, 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 get that catheter into the vein, all the way inserted to the hub, while this other person is just nice and slow pushing on that saline flush. If you're doing it yourself, it'll be a little tougher, but hey, you can do it. Just have to hold it and push as you're wiggling through and inserting. And at some point, you're gonna have that whole catheter in there, and then you can test it again, pull back, make sure you actually have blood return and all that, uh, push it through, and this person's not gonna be you know, screaming in pain because you're actually in his vein and it's not gonna hurt too bad. So there's your, your needle, it's in there, your valve's closed around it, but it doesn't matter, you're already through, you didn't blow it, and that is how you float an IV.